Hello guys, I'm Sean and welcome to ST Animals. So our 200 locusts have arrived and we've created two different enclosures for them. One based around soil and bioactivity, the other kind of bare and basic. The idea is essentially to pit ideal versus conventional. Now the bioactivity of the soil will help sustain a clean environment and it's ideal for the adults to lay eggs in whereas the basic is easier to set up and maintain minimal humidity. However, this is one of the adults. With their wings able to fly short distances and cover more ground. Anyways, let's get to it. So hopefully our soil setup won't retain too much humidity. Being a smaller enclosure, this could be the possibility. With the ventilation on the roof near the back of the setup, a heat lamp will also help reduce humidity and creating a warmer environment for this desert dwelling species. Creating mounds gives an aesthetic look while creating a larger surface area. The addition of moss will in theory create a microhabitat for a cleanup crew. The cork bark will help stop this extending into the rest of the enclosure, meaning these two species can inhabit the same space. With the light soaking, avoiding dampening the soil too much, the final touches to finish up. So I initially had this idea given I get through a number of bug orders with my menagerie. Breeding locusts will definitely help cut the cost down, and I think it will also be a nice experience to watch them develop, knowing they've got great nutrition and hopefully a comfortable life. Previously keeping locusts, I've always used the basic setup, which doesn't really allow the adults a good spot to lay their eggs. The soil dish can be added. But with limited space, this hasn't proved to be very suitable in the past. Locusts naturally like to climb. Helps get them new leaves, away from predators, and open to new heat sources. A propped up piece of cork bark serves as their little pedestal. I always recommend unboxing in an open space to avoid any of the escapees darting under any furnishings. Trust me, I learnt this the hard way and never release any as non-native animals can cause a huge amount of damage. Time for the unboxing. Four bags of fourth hoppers. Ordered from Northampton Reptile Centre. Having used a number of supplies throughout the years, I've stuck with these guys given their quality products, decent price and great customer service. Put it this way. This order contained five dead on arrivals. Any other supplier, I'd expect at least 20. And they're not even sponsoring me for this video. <laughs> the swarm unpacked. Given a moment to settle while the finishing touches to the enclosure are added. Time to add our cleaning crew. I mean, it's not an SG Animals video if we don't talk about them at least once. Springtails and three species of wood lice from the bio setup. Exploring their new home, the majority scatter under the safety of the moss. Here come the locusts. Thankfully, unlike crickets, these guys don't bite. These little insects often creep people out, but personally I find them to be rather pretty, with individual patterns and nice yellow coverage.
feeding mainly on leafy greens. Always wash to remove any residual pesticides. They also hydrate from their food. So the additional water droplets will only make sure we have no thirsty locust. Kale is a good calcium and vitamin C supply. Whatever the locusts consume is in addition then passed on to the animal that consumes the locust. Gut loading. Therefore, the healthier the locust, the higher their nutritional quality, the healthier the reptile. I'm hoping the soil in the enclosure will allow us to continually plant live grass. Helping further their diet and provide some sort of enrichment. It's easily missed, but if you take a second to observe, you can really start to notice some sort of social construct in their behaviour. And their own individual techniques and personalities shine through. Maybe these creatures are underestimated. Which is part of the reason I like to believe each animal has their own personality traits. Beyond our current understanding. At the end of the day, science is a valuable tool that still needs to catch up and recognise the potential for mental capacity. It's for this reason I like to treat every animal with respect, assuming they can feel pain and do have feelings. In which case, if I'm wrong, I've caused no damage. The bare and basic setup has a substrate layer of bug grub and egg crates for climbing and increased surface area. Although I have to feed these guys with a bowl as the moisture will turn the substrate mouldy causing a colony to receive infections. I mean it's not a lot to look at but it does the job. So basically, order the locust, set the enclosure up, pop them in, feed your local colon, and hope for some happy healthy locust. Sadly, after a week of feeding and monitoring, roughly a quarter of the soil team has been lost. Whereas the bare and basic has only seen maybe two losses. It seems the limited space in the smaller vivarium, even with the heat lamp, is making it too difficult to keep the humidity low where we want it. The plan has failed. The soil and self-maintaining enclosure has been a failure. Sadly, this is the bitter truth sometimes. Theories and ideas don't always pan out as planned. The soil crew will be transferred to a bare and basic style makeup to avoid any further losses. But to be honest, I feel in a larger enclosure, provided extra height and maybe a wooden or net based build, the humidity shouldn't be an issue as it will disperse. I think the small size of the vivarium hasn't provided the adequate airflow or dispersion throughout. I'll certainly try this again in the future though, when more space can be provided, hopefully leading to a success and a happy healthy colony. But anyway, for now, thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you in the next one. I know I've already had two baby updates, but guess what, a new species has left a gift for us. <laughs>